In this episode, let's have a look at this Shure lithium-ion battery that does not charge. Here I have a good battery. Let's put it into this charger. Charging light comes on, no problem. Now let's put this battery into the same slot. The charger shows nothing for a while and then shows an error. There you go. These are so-called smart batteries, meaning that uh, the controller inside, beyond basic overcharging, over-discharging protection, keeps track of the energy going in and out, and this way can give a quite good estimate of the state of charge, just like any phone or a laptop computer. And for that to work, the battery has two extra terminals for data communication. And the error we have seen means that the charger cannot talk to the battery. And I tried cleaning the contacts, I tried putting the battery into this uh, different slot, and I tried leaving it in the charger for a long time, hoping it will recover, but nothing helped so far. These batteries can work with a number of Shure transmitters and receivers. Here I have a ULXD transmitter, and these transmitters and receivers can also take a pair of AA batteries, rechargeable or not. Here I have a pair of rechargeable ones. Let's turn this on. So, we see this battery gauge with five segments total, and four of them we see right now. This is not very accurate, so let's put in the lithium-ion battery. This must be the good one. So, the transmitter shows this calc message for a while, and then it will give an estimate of runtime in minutes. I believe it measures the current consumption, which depends on the transmitter settings. This transmitter has three settings, 20 milliwatts, 10 milliwatts, which is the current one, and 1 milliwatt. And these batteries also last longer than double A's, perhaps more than 10 hours, at least on the low setting. So here we have an estimate of 5 hours and 21 minutes. And this battery is not fully charged. Here I have three versions of the battery. SB900, SB900A and B. And this one is dead. So, let's have a closer look. We can see two terminals on the opposite sides, and that means AA batteries must be connected in series, like so. And in that case, the nominal voltage is about 3 volts for non-rechargeable ones, and about 2 volts discharged. And this battery seems to have uh, two cells as well, but they must be connected in parallel, because the nominal voltage marked here is 3.7 volts, just like one lithium-ion cell. So, fully charged voltage is uh, 4.2, and discharged about uh, 3 volts, let's say. So, let's measure a good battery. About 3.8 volts. And this dead battery shows nothing at all. So, I believe the cells inside are discharged beyond some threshold that the internal controller is not working. And I'm afraid the only way to proceed is to take it apart, which might be destructive, and the battery might not be fixable. But at least we will have a look inside, and perhaps learn something. I hit it a few times with this thing, like so. And now there is a crack along the seam here. So I should be able to get inside quite easily, I believe. Here we are, inside. And now we can clearly see that the cells are connected in parallel, indeed. And the negative terminal is connected to the battery directly, but the positive must go through some switch in this uh, battery management system, or BMS. 
Let's have a closer look under a microscope. This is positive terminal connected to the bottom of the board. This is battery positive. This terminal seems to be for a temperature sensor. This is a MOSFET. I'm not sure what this is. I cannot read the marking on this because of the coating. This must be the main controller chip. And again, I cannot read the marking, unfortunately. This is another MOSFET. This is battery negative, and this terminal must be for data communication. Now, let's measure the cells directly by passing the BMS. About 2 volts. This is not too bad. My guess is that the battery was fully discharged to begin with and then kept like that for a very long time. All batteries have some self-discharge. Lithium-ion batteries don't lose the charge very quickly, perhaps just a few percent a month. But given enough time, they can self-discharge to this point that the BMS does not work anymore. So let's see if we can charge the cells directly and bring the battery back to life. So I connected the battery to a lab supply. I limited the voltage to 4.2 volts just in case the current is limited to 0.2 amps. So let's turn this on and we will see if we can bring the voltage above 3 volts at least. After a while, the voltage is above 3.5, should be enough to test. Let's turn this off. It seems to hold the charge just fine. And now we should be able to move this positive to the terminal. There is no voltage there. Let's apply the voltage to the terminal. And now turn this off, and there you go, the voltage is there. This is promising. Now we should be able to put the top on and test it. Yes, it is working. How cool is that? Here I have Shure Wireless Workbench software and the charger is connected to the network right now. So the charger shows uh, battery time to full and percentage and that percentage was sitting at zero for quite a while and just started climbing little by little. And here we have uh, battery health 100%, cycle count 0, original maximum 1200 50 milliamp hours and current maximum 1222 milliamp hours, slightly lower for some reason. So I guess because the BMS was reset, it will need some time to learn about the battery capacity. Perhaps it will take a charging discharging cycle or something like that. The battery reports to be 100% charged. And the light is green here, but I'm not sure I can trust this. Let's see if we can test this somehow. Let's use this electronic load to discharge the battery and measure milliamp hours. The battery is sitting at almost 4.2 volts, which is perfect. And I took the cover off again, just because it is easier to grab the terminals this way. Let's discharge at uh, gentle 120 milliamps because it is about 0.1 C. So it should take about 10 hours, I hope. Let's go. Here is the result. 1342 milliamp hours. 
and the nominal marked on the battery is 1240. It took 11 hours to discharge. This is perfect. The repair went quite well, and the battery looks good. I didn't glue it yet, but with just a few drops of super glue it should be good. Thanks for watching. Bye.